Are you struggling to lose weight and keep it off? Tired of wasting time and money on starvation diets that lead to more frustration and stress? If there was a weight loss solution that could actually work for you, would you try it? Then head to golo.com. I'm Steve. I lost 138 pounds in nine months on Golo. I'm Amber. I've lost 128 pounds with Golo. If you're ready to take back control of your life, head to golo.com now and see how Golo can work for you. That's golo.com. My sleep is way better. My inflammation has gone way down. Golo saved my life. I was way overweight. That's what sent me down the path. I wanted to make sure and live for my kid. I have literally tried everything. I was on the verge of getting gastric bypass surgery and I saw the Golo commercial and it was the last thing I tried because it worked. Join over 2 million people who found a better way to lose weight with Golo. Your healthier and happier life begins at golo.com. That's G-O-L-O.com. Again, G-O-L-O.com. Hey, Adam Colbertson here. Before we begin, we got a promo from another independent podcast, so when you finish this episode, make sure you go and check them out. Oh my god, I know words. Yeah, I love etymology! Spooky Yuki. Murderer. Double murders. Zombies. Horror is always political. Mm -hmm. I don't like that at all. Hi, I'm Alex, and I'm a creep. And I'm Sunshine, her creep-enabling best friend. Together we tackle all things horror. History, politics, science, and sociology. From zombies to serial killers. Pomegranates and Pitchforks is a horror and true crime podcast that brings true stories and not-so-true stories together in beautiful and disturbing harmony. Steal your mind, for eldritch horrors of the universe unknown. For what is to follow is a tale of intrigue, mystery, and madness. You're listening to Microphones and Monsters. So right now, inside the dreamland, Victor and Alistair, after they fall asleep inside the the shower room, they appear on top of the hospital. And Victor, Alistair, when you look at Victor, Victor doesn't look like himself. He's still wearing his trench coat. He's wearing his fedora. Um, He's still got his his uh, butterfly sword in his uh, sheath, but he looks like the human that he's tried to shapeshift into uh, this entire time. Hmm. Interesting. So I suppose this is how you view yourself? Uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is who, who I am. This is who I wish I were. That, that, I think, is more accurate, yes. <laughs> Although it does beg the question, um, why you are lucid? I have absolutely no idea. Is, this is the dreamlands, right? Well, yes, it is. It is quite unusual for one of your um, nature to be lucid in the dreamlands as such. And, uh, Victor, you also notice that uh, you don't feel the crawling on your skin at the moment. No. Oh, okay. since, since you've been since you've been in the dreamlands. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I'm just as confused as Victor is. I. <laughs> 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 it, 
is... What are you two doing here? Um, excuse me? It's the, uh, the Martian cat from before. <laughs> well, I am a Dreamlands cat. I have every right to be here. And I'm not actually sure why I'm here. <laughs> yes, yeah, Tanasha. You remember as Tanasha. Tanasha. Would, uh, would the cat recognize me? I see you've made, I see you've made new friends, Alistair. Um, I suppose that depends on what you mean by new. Uh, still new in the sense that, uh, I suppose it's only been about, uh, a week or so. How is this human in the Dreamlands? How is he lucid? That is lucid? an excellent question, and one that I would be very interested in answering. <sighs> well... I've been looking for you anyways. Oh, really? Because it seems that your type have been avoiding me for some time now. They were told to keep an eye on you and keep their distance. I see. Until I could I could come in contact with you. Sorry, is this the same cat that I saw in the real, in the waking world that took us yeah, to the Yeah, the, the pink... The pink fluorescent okay. uh, skinless cat with, or uh, not skinless, but hairless cat <laughs> I with just, uh, yeah. really long legs, long tail. I was just trying to figure out whether Victor would recognize it because that's the only one that he's seen. Yes, he you would, you would okay. recognize it, yeah. Okay. cool. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> that's all right. No, you're fine. You're fine. So then what is it that you would talk to me about? We owe you information. Why, yes, and I have sought such, and it has been very difficult getting it. The portals. You want to know more about the portals, don't you? Why, yes, of course. The portals that were opened by that device, whatever whatever it was, it also opened up a portal on the other side, inside the Dreamlands, to another location. Hmm. We don't know the location, but we know that it's not a portal to the waking world. See. Where is where, where is this portal relative to where we are now? It was the one inside the theater. Oh. Well, on the other side of the Dreamlands portal from the theater where the Shogoth came through from, came through that portal into the portal into the waking world. So Two portals. So the Dreamlands were being used as kind of a traveling space? Yes. Hmm, I see. And I, I suppose that this other portal is uh, since gone? Yes. It disappeared with the... When the portals closed, it, both of them closed. And have you seen any other portals like these? Well, we never saw them. We only sensed them. Um, out of curiosity, is there any particular place that you did sense them? Here, in the in the hospital, beneath it. Like just now? Well, not now, but it's been very sporadic here and there as as the days have gone by. But we cannot get inside the hospital within, say, the past three days. Yes, it has opened in the past three days. Well. That very well could be tied to the matter at hand, then. We actually lost another champion in the waking world. He went inside of the hospital and never came out. And we have not been able to get inside the hospital in the Dreamlands. Um, another champion, you say? Yes. It was weeks ago. We have not sent anybody else in since. Hmm. Um, any, any information you might have about this champion? Small. Cat. <laughs> I'm guessing they didn't have all sorts of, um, hoses or mechanical parts to them when you sent them in? Why would you ask a question like that? Oh, don't worry about it. It's nothing. Hmm. Well, there is... We suspect that there may be a way inside of the hospital, but look. And she points over towards uh, the middle of the roof, and you see a uh, small puddle of water. Hmm. I do not want to go in it. 
I am certain you do not. I myself do not want to go in it, but I fear that I must. Yeah, um, Alistair, I'm going to let you go first, since you're used to the dreamlands, and um, I'm... More importantly, um, could you maybe, like, dip a toe in or something? Uh, I just want to see, is it actually wet? Okay, I'll, I'll walk over and I'll just sort of gently, I'll just sort of dip down and stick, stick, you know, like a finger in, in the puddle and see what happens. So when you do, like, you, you go over, you stick your finger in, and uh, while it looks like a puddle and you just see a puddle with roof underneath it, when you stick your finger in, it actually goes deeper than the roof. And it is like a like a small pool of water. It feels like a small pool of water, but it still looks like a puddle. Okay. And uh, we'll cut it there. <laughs> All <right>. Okay. <laughs> Victor, right, Victor's uh, in the dreamlands. Julian, you uh, just turned around, said, "Oh fuck!" to the the man who you recognize. Ah. Is that a way to greet your friend, Julian? I haven't seen you in some time, Edwin. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, it has been a long time, but I've been busy as I imagine you have as well. Yes. Um, maybe not in the same way that you would assume. Uh, what are you doing here? Why, I am furthering my research, of course. Uh, I do have a... I do have funding now, and uh, as well as an endless supply of specimens. But uh, he walks past you and walks up to the, the construct that failed to stand up earlier, that kind of, like, glitched out, and he pulls a pistol out of his... out of a holster and shoots it in the head. This, uh, sadly, this malfunctioned. Well, luckily for you and your friends, it malfunctioned. But, uh, uh these things do happen. And he puts the, the gun back in, in the holster. So, what brings you into the hospital, Julian? Edwin, I'm, I'm looking for someone. Someone I was, uh, working with in town. So many questions. Um... I thought you abandoned the research after the incident at the university. I thought that was a clear indication that you probably shouldn't have continued to pursue that. Well, I did have everybody believe that I had discontinued my research in reanimation, but uh, my obsession with it never stopped. Even under different employ, I did finish my training as a doctor, and, and I ended up in the war over on the other side of the world for the the Paladin Order, the Seeker of the Keys for a while even, as a surgeon on the battlefield. Where have you been pulling the subjects? They have been delivered to me, actually. Uh, you want to take a walk with me, Julian? I need... I want to show you something. I, I need my friends within eyeshot. I don't know this... Oh, don't worry about them. I, I don't want to harm any of you. Uh, I do believe that this conversation needs to be done with just the two of us, but I assure you that your friends will not be harmed. I have no intention and I have no desire to hurt them in any way. I'm going to take a long look at Victor and Alistair. And there, I mean, there's nothing like actually wrong with them other than that they're unconscious, correct? Correct. And he, he assures you, uh, they're just asleep. I, it was just a simple sleeping gas uh, that knocked them out. And I will have my laborers take them down to my lab and we'll go to my lab after, after I'm done showing you uh, what I've been working on. Oh my gosh, I forgot what the, tre the check was. Um, um, Insight check on that. Okay, yeah, go for it. Don't let Victor and Alistair die, please. I, I'm I'm trying not to. Hold on, I need to find my dice. <laughs> okay, here we go. Insight check. And what is that? That's um. Do, 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 do. Was it just uh twenty plus bonus for wisdom? Are you proficient? Because it's not a skill. 
Oh, it is a skill. Never mind. No. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, it is a skill. Got a plus one. So that is a 20. Okay. I rolled a 19. Uh, so he seems to be telling you the truth. Uh, when especially like him saying that he has no intention of causing any harm to your friends or you or, or anything. He, he's telling the truth. I don't really have any options to wake you guys up, so... I let them sleep, Julian. They, this this is a, a very private conversation I need to have with you. Okay. Like I said, my I will have my laborers. They will take them down to my lab in the basement. They will be waiting there for us whenever we return. Also, uh, as as you leave the room, uh, he's leading the way. Mm-hmm. And uh, as you leave the room, you do hear uh, whirring behind you, and you see the two constructs um, that he called laborers. Uh, they do. Uh, walk over and, and pick up Julian and, and Victor, and you hear them. Oh, you hear it. Julian and go Victor dim as you're walking nice. away. Oh shit! They're not going to be in the room still. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, uh, Alistair <laughs> and Victor. I'm sorry. I'm not the only they pick one up, that does it. They pick up Alistair and Victor. So Julian. Uh, how how far is the? Okay, so are we walking to the lab or are we walking to somewhere else? Uh, we're going to go upstairs, Julian, uh, where some of the the subjects well, are being held. Edwin, why did you pick an abandoned hospital to do this? I didn't choose it. My master did. You have a master now. Oh, yeah. The, the, the one that I told you that is funding my research. Oh, I assumed it was a patron. I didn't assume it was an actual master. Uh, he's uh, a king of sorts, yes, but uh, not from around here, of course. Um, how did you, how did you uh, happen upon this king, or how did this king happen upon you? I guess it was he happened upon me. Y'all get to the end of the hallway, and he he opens up the door to to go up the stairs. Ah, yes, like I like I said, I was uh, working as a surgeon for. The Seekers of the Silver Key. They were at a war with the undead. At the city of An- Anibis. And I don't know if that news has traveled over here. Uh, not many people that I have come across has even heard of Anibis. But uh, the city did lose its living and the king took over. Uh, would I be able to know what the, the, the Silver Key organization is? Uh, you do know it to be a paladin order. Uh, but as far as uh, everything that they do, you, you don't know. Okay. Um, while I was working as a surgeon, bringing the paladins back to life, healing their wounds... Um, or keeping them from expiring. Uh, I did get plenty of specimens to further my research. Uh, very fresh specimens. They, uh... In... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Edwin. I... I gave up this research. Um... A while ago, uh, what, what, what are you trying to accomplish with this? Uh, well, immortality, of course, uh, but not just immortality, not just reanimation, but the preservation of the mind as well. Edwin, in the, in the research that I have done, just to solidify the process between interfacing the machine elements and the organic elements itself was an insurmountable task alone, let alone the uh, absolute... It's, it's not within reach. The most we could ever do is make these... these... Uh, uh, these dumb construct, these, uh, you know, uh, fleshy slaves... There's. This is not. 
immortality can't be derived by this. And to be perfectly honest, Edwin, from all that I've done, I, I don't think anyone deserves immortality or has the right to it if this is what it costs. Ah, yes. Um, he stops up at the, at the top of the stairs with you uh, before opening the door and he, he puts his arm around your shoulder and he's like, my good friend, Julian, uh, I did not know that you stopped your research. I know that you were doing your research not too long ago. I did catch wind of, of uh, your continued research in Arkham. I even used some of your techniques to further my research, but uh, there was flaws in it. I have the the constructs that you saw downstairs, my laborers, they, they are, they are from not so fresh specimens. Uh, Whenever you have a more fresh specimen, you are able to reanimate before all the decay and uh, the loss of, of the mind and, and who they were before doesn't go away as much. But I did hit a snag. Uh, the, the gas that we had used before, uh, it's very... I look back on it now, it is a very crude source uh, of reanimation. I have developed a serum from that. Uh, It also, the reanimated is able to last longer and decay less with this serum. And uh, as a matter of fact, let me show you uh, my first subject with the, the serum that I have been developing. And he opens up the door and and you come to a hallway and there's a lot of doors. Uh, There's a red light, red lights along the the ceiling. And he walks with you up to the first door and it's it's, uh, got a big glass window. And you're looking inside of a padded room. And there's a man in there hitting his head on the wall. As you see with this one, this was one of those seekers. He he was my first fresh specimen. And sadly, my serum was not perfected at the time. And he maintained reanimation without decay, but lost his mind. Which brings me to my next subject. I started adding in other types of DNA besides human DNA into the serum. Uh, Creatures such as uh, reptilian creatures to uh, help with the repair of the cells in the reanimation. You walk up to the, uh, the next room and look inside the glass and as your face, are you looking into the room? Yes. All right. So as your face gets up to the glass, uh, this crazed man runs up to the the glass and hits his face on the glass. He's like, "This one kept some of his mind more animalistic nature. Uh, this one." hit pretty hard. It actually got me caught out there. Uh, I had to go into hiding afterwards, but I was able to gather this subject back up later. Uh, But he did uh, he did cannibalize the camp before running away. They never caught him, but I managed to catch him later. Victor stuck his finger inside the water. I told you what it felt like. Um, it felt like a pool of water, not just a puddle. Okay. So, take over. Um, I'm gonna pull my finger out and see if it's wet. Yeah, it's wet. It's wet. Okay. 
Uh, Alistair, it, it does feel wet, but it's like there's a hole in the roof. It's not solid once we get past the surface of the water. Yes, but it's it's the wet part that I'm more concerned about. You you see, like being wet doesn't really suit me. So you want me to go in a mysterious puddle hole by myself? Um Well, I mean, if you're suggesting. Tanasha walks up to the puddle and she's like so you're saying that this this isn't a puddle, that it's deeper? Yes, it's just the surface that appears to be water. It, it got my finger wet, but but it's not solid underneath. Huh. Where Where is everybody in... in uh, where are the two of you in correlation to the puddle right now? I mean, I'm assuming that I'm sort of just still, like, standing or... I'm probably just kneeling next to the puddle. I had just stuck my finger in it, so I'm closer to the ground, so I'm just sort of standing there. So, you know, I'm probably about okay. five feet separated from the puddle. Five feet separated from the puddle? Yeah. Had to make it a wet puddle. <laughs> Do you know any dry puddles? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, it's, hey, this it's, is it's the clearly not it's a possible. normal puddle. Like, it, is, it could be a dry puddle pull the finger out and it's not wet it would have made things so much easier <laughs> <laughs> so uh, who's gonna go first I, I'm, I'm going with you who are you now well I, if we come across that portal we need to figure out how to control it well if you insist on coming along perhaps you should go first I would rather not. And such is my position. As long as you as long as you two follow me, I'll go first. So I will just So while well, y'all y'all are talking about that and you're saying you're gonna go first, all of you feel a tremor underneath your feet. The roof of the hospital is starting to shake. And roll for initiative. Okay. Lovely. What roll for initiative? Did me included or you're not no, there. <laughs> just them two. I, I had to ask. <laughs> You're hanging out with your buddy. I, I never said he Dr. was my buddy. Frankenstein I said Connors. He, we, we, he was a, a study acquaintance. Okay. I got a 21. Guess we're going to fight a puddle on a rooftop. Okay, yours was 21. Yes, sir. Alistair. Sorry, we were so into the role play, I just wasn't ready. I know. Oh, I'm not saying the role play is done. <laughs> Just right. uh, there's going to be initiative involved or like combat involved a little bit, All maybe. Right. My total will be 17. All right. Well, uh, there is a surprise action against y'all. It comes along with that uh, that tremor, that rumbling. So out of the puddle, the the tremor gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and then this creature bursts through the ceiling breaking the ceiling apart and, and creating a big pool of water there rather than just the puddle. Um, this pale eel-like creature has bulging amphibian eyes and two broad spade-like claws, and it goes to bite and claw at Alistair. That's a nat 20. Oh, gosh. I can't even bite. I don't think. And a 15 to hit? Yes. That hits? Yes. Okay. It as, it as it comes goes up and it comes down, um, Alistair, it goes to bite you. And this is a, a large creature. Um, it goes to bite you and, and, and get you with one of his fangs for 12 damage. And it uses one of its spade-like claws and slashes at you for an additional seven damage. Okay. Then. And then, as it as it lands on on the ground next to you, its tail comes up out of the water and swings at you for. Oh, you really for, hate uh, me today. 
<laughs> it hits you for uh, or the hit is seventeen. Yes, and you take an additional five damage, and the tail wraps around you and pulls you into the water, and he swims down. You're grappled. And you're completely submerged, wrapped up in his tail. And he dives 20 feet into the water. You know, in all honesty, um, taking taking enough damage to be down to 17 health is still nothing compared to being wet. Yeah. <laughs> you will you will never recover from the mental damage. Yeah, at least I don't have to coax Alistair into the puddle. Hey everybody, it's Max. Uh, that was episode 33. A couple interesting things happened in this episode. I don't know if you were paying attention or not. But um, Kat's kind of out of the bag about how uh, Julian's not so much a nice person. More so than usual. Alistair got to see Victor's um, uh, ideal self. Yeah, his, his, his ideal self-image, as it were. Um... I get paraded through a shop of horrors, reminding me of all of the terrible things that I've done in the past, and more to come on that. (laughs) Alistair and Victor are uh, ambushed by what seems to be uh, puddle pirates in the very wet puddle and not the very dry puddle. So we'll see what goes with that. Please visit us at www.microphonesandmonsters.com. We have a Patreon uh, tab over there. If you guys would like to support us via Patreon, please do. Uh, We currently only have a $1 per month uh, support membership. Um, Anything you can throw our way would be greatly appreciated. And this will go towards our current project and maybe some new projects in the future. All of our music and songs are written and produced by Marco Mazzi at Fallen Highway Studios. Thank you guys for listening and tune in next time.